Hello, everybody. Uh, um, so for this section, we're going to do linearization and differentials, um, and it's going to be a little bit of a brief uh, topic. You'll spend a lot more time on this in Calculus 2. Um, so this is just kind of an introduction into linearization and what it can do for you. Um, basically, what linearization is saying is it's a fancy way of saying find the tangent line. OK, and the reason for that is, is if we look right here, I have a little graph of some curve y equals f of x. And then um, I drew a tangent line to the graph at A. So if we notice, my graph is a pretty good representative of the curve. Uh, the tangent line is a pretty good representative of the curve um, near A. OK, so in calculus two, you're going to talk about something uh, called the radius of convergence or the I'm sorry, the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Um, but for now, we're just going to say that um, in general, when we stay really close to A, our tangent line is a good approximation for f of x. Now, obviously, there's exceptions, um, and we'll find out there's certain problems in calculus two um, that cause issues, but it kind of looks like a good representative. Now, obviously, it's a perfect representative at A, um, but we want to know if the tangent line is a good representative, then we could use the tangent line to predict values of f of x. It be important um, in programming, say you have a very complicated function um, and you need to code it um, and you can just code it as a line and the line is a pretty good representative of that function so it'll save you time. Um, I'm not a coder so I don't know exactly how much that time that send, saves you but I know in programming this is something that they might use. Um, so anyway, um, let's take a look at this. So it says find the linearization of f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x at x x equals zero, and then use it to estimate the value of square root of 1.1. So what they're doing is they're telling us in this particular problem, a is zero. So what we need to do first is in order to find the tangent line and use it to approximate that, we have to find the derivative. So I'm going to say, oops, uh, let's do this. Well, let's do it in blue. So I'm going to say f of x equals 1 plus x to the 1 half power. So then f prime of x is equal to 1 half times 1 plus x to the negative 1 half power times 1, the chain rule, right? Um, so this cleans up to be, what would it be? 1 over 2 square roots of 1 plus x, okay? So we have our clean, cleaner version of this. So then we need to calculate this when x is 0. So we're going to say f prime of 0 equals 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus 0. So we know that that's just going to be the square root of 1. So we get 1 half. So we know the slope of the tangent line at 0 is worth 1 half. Okay. So you guys remember your old school formula from um, pre-calc and algebra, uh, the point slope form. If you ever need to find the equation of a line, we just do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay. So then in this case, we need to find a point. Point is going to be, well, we know the x value is 0, right? Because it says it right here. So we need to find the y value. Um, so we're just going to plug 0 in, and we get the point 1. So we plug 0 into here, and we get f of 0 would be 1 plus 0. So we get the square root of 1, so we get 1. So this is our point that we're going to use in point slope form. This guy is going to go right here, and then this guy is going to go right there. So, and oh, by the way, what are we going to do with this guy? Well, that's going to go right there for M because that's the slope of our tangent line. Remember, we are finding the tangent line. The purpose of this is to find the tangent line and then use the line to approximate some curve. Okay. So now we're going to say Y minus Y sub one, which will be one equals M, but we found that to be one half times X minus, oops, X minus zero. So we end up getting y equals one half x. Um, was it would that be plus one? Okay. So what this means is we are now going to say that the square root of one plus x is approximately one half x plus one. Okay. Now again, I know if you know, I graph this, you know, um, really far away from zero, the line and the square root would no longer be very close to the same. But again, we're talking about what if we stay near um, x equals zero or a equals zero, okay? So we're saying this is our linearization. So this 
is our linearization. We have now created a line that represents the function. That's kind of the purpose of this. And then we can use that to approximate the square root of 1.1 up here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say that the square root of 1.1 would equal one half, oops, approximately equal one half X plus one. But just, just keep in mind real quick um, that uh, in order to get 1.1 using this, what did X have to be? X had to be um, 0.1, right? Because if we come over here, uh, if we come right here, we say, well, this would be the square root of 1 plus 0.1, right? And that is because I'm using the square root of 1 plus X, okay? So that means that X is worth 1.1. So we're going to say, we're going to take out this X and we're going to replace it. Oops, I'll use it in red so you guys know I moved it in. So we're going to replace it with 0.1, okay? So let's see what we get. So one, I, so I don't have to get out my calculator. 0. 0.1 is really the same as 1 tenth plus 1. But that's 20th plus 1. So that's really 21 20th. Or let me see. I think if I did that, oops, sorry about that. If I did that on my calculator, that would be approximately, not approximately, it'd be exactly 1.05. Okay. Um, yeah. So we get that the square root of one plus 0.1 is approximately equal to 1.05. Okay. Now that's not the right answer. Let's look real quick. We can double check something. So we can do, um, let me see here. We can do second function square root of 1.1, and we see that we get 1.0488. So the true answer is 1.048808884, so on and so on and so on. So the thing is, is that our answer is wrong. We know that this answer is actually gonna be wrong, okay, in general, okay? But it's an approximation. And I didn't need, you know, just think about how you would find the square root of 1.1 like without a calculator. You know, you'd have to start guessing, well, it'd be one point something times one point something would be, you know, and then you just keep adding and subtracting until you get close enough where you accept it. So in general, this is a way that we can get a pretty fast way to approximate something that might be much more difficult without a calculator. OK, and then again, in calculus, two, you'll expand that thought um, and you'll take it much further. Um, and by the way, um, a line really is just a polynomial. So we're basically representing a rational function. Oh, I'm sorry, a square root function as a polynomial. That will come in handy in calculus two. Calculus two, you're going to find that you can pretty much approximate anything um, with a polynomial. And those are called Taylor polynomials. You're going to use that in calculus two in your power series section. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the other side of the coin. Okay. So I drew a picture. Uh, again, to try to kind of look at this a little bit. Oops, let me move this. Okay. So, so I drew a picture, another curve. Okay. And it says linearization uses tangent lines to estimate the y value of a function. Differentials use tangent lines to estimate um, the change in y given certain changes in x. Okay. So both of them are doing the same thing in a way. They're both trying to talk about the original curve based on the tangent line. But one of them is saying, well, based on the tangent line, I'm going to approximate the value. OK, um, this one is saying, how much has the tangent line changed? I can use the amount the tangent line has changed by in terms of y to approximate how much the original curve would have changed by. OK, so um, it's basically trying to do the same thing. Um, but they come at it. It's like two sides of the same coin. One of them is straight away trying to predict the value. And one of them is trying to say, how much has the value changed by? But if you know how much something has changed by, then you know that you know the new value as well. So it can also get you there as well. So very important uh, key here is linearization uses tangent lines to estimate the Y value. Okay. Differentials use tangent lines to estimate the change in y 
Okay, so two different things, but kind of dancing around the same topic. Okay, so I drew my drawing here. Now, um, if you notice, I took my tangent line and I started it at A, and then the distance that I traveled from here to here to this new location, well, that's a delta X, right? In, in general, that's delta X. That's how far we've gone, okay? So the thing is, is that means that the curve, the curve has changed that same amount, right? That curve has changed um, delta X. But when I drew my tangent line, the kind of weird thing is the tangent line has also changed delta X. But in general, tangent lines are working with derivatives. So we're going to call that change dx, okay? And that's the differential. And then we're going to call the change in y of the tangent line dy. So notice the curve itself only changed, oops, wrong button. The curve itself only changed right here, only changed by a delta y. But then the tangent line changed by a dy. Okay, so what we're going to try to see is what's that difference, right? How far apart they are. So um, the delta Y will change by a certain amount, and then the dy will change by a certain amount. And we're hoping that they're pretty close to the same number, because again, our goal is to say that we can approximate that change using linearization. Okay, so let me erase that real quick. Okay, so um, just keep in mind here that it says delta Y and delta X are how much the curve y equals f of x is changing, the actual graph, and dy and dx are representing how much the tangent line is changing by, okay? So then I wrote down here, I said, what if I wanted to write dy dx, right? So we look here at dy dx based on this curve, okay? And I see that dy dx isn't that just the slope of the tangent line, right? We have the rise and we have the run, okay? The change in y is divided by the change in x's. So I'm going to just say that this is the slope of the tangent line. But we know how to find the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is just um, f prime. So that means that once again, we have to find the derivative, okay? So let's say that I have my function f of x. Okay, so I'm going to write right here. Let's say that I have my function f of x. So I'm going to write dy dx is equal to f prime of x. So what I could do is I could multiply the dx over to the other side. Okay. So differentials are normally, are hopefully small numbers. So that cancels. And we're left with dy is equal to f prime of x dx. Okay. Now, this, I don't know if, if I um, kind of glossed over it, but what this is saying is, is that we can approximate the change in the height of the tangent line by finding the derivative and multiplying it by the change in x, okay? So I'm going to come down here. Let's take a look at this problem. It says use differentials to estimate when, uh, or use differentials to estimate dy when x equals 0, dx equals 0.1, for f of x equals the square root of x plus one. So this is a similar problem or the exact same problem we did previously, but we're coming at it from a different angle. So what's the first thing we need for differentials? Well, we need the derivative. So I'm going to find f prime of x. But once again, this is really x plus one to the one half power. So I'm going to take the power, put it in front, rewrite the inside, reduce the power by one, and take the derivative of the inner function, which is one. So once again, uh, and again, this is familiar because we already did this problem, um, the same derivative. This is two square roots of x plus one, okay? Now, the thing is, is we know that dy dx is equal to f prime of x. So I'm going to kind of go through what I did up here with my differential. I'm going to solve for dy. So I'm going to multiply dx over to the other side. So I have f prime of x dx, okay? And then I'm going to plug in what I know, okay? So I know that we're x equals 0. So that means that dy is worth 1 over 2 times the square root of 0 plus 1 times dx, but we know dx is 0.1, okay? 
So this is going to become, so dy equals, now this is going to be, um, let me see here, I'll, so I don't have to get out my calculator. This is going to be 1 over 2 times 1 over 10. So that's going to be 1 20th, but we know 1 20th is worth, oops, we know 1 20th is worth 0 0.05. Okay, so that means dy is worth 0 0.05. So what this is saying is, is that the tangent line has changed by 0 0.05, okay? But something to keep in mind is we went, if we want to approximate, um, so the change in Y is 0 0.05. So what that means is, is if I were to do the square root of 1.1, minus the square root of one, we would get 0 0.048, oops, 4880, okay? And we know that, so we're going from the square root of one to the square root of 1.1. .1. How much has the original graph changed by? The original graph, f of x, has changed by 0 0.04880. What we're saying is our tangent line, dy, the change in the tangent line was 0 0.05. So we're really darn close to the actual change, okay? Um, again, it's still wrong. The tangent line changed by 0 0.05. The true graph or the real graph changed by 0 0.04880. But again, much easier to work with the line than it is to work with the uh, square root function, okay? So this is just an example. Now, uh, also, if you notice, from the beginning up here, the original problem I did, right? Look right here. We went from one to 1 1.05. What was the change? The change was 0 0.05. So we kind of already knew the, the change in Y the uh, of the tangent line, the dy, but differentials solve for it, okay? So linearization, you can also use linearization to find the dy uh, if, you, if you build the line. But in this case, instead of building the line, we just directly found how much the tangent line changed by, okay? So hopefully this helps you guys uh, see how you can use a line to approximate. So I have a, a problem here. Uh, I was gonna have you guys um, give this one a shot. Okay, so pause the video, give this one a shot. It says, find the linearization of f of x equals one over x plus three um, when a equals zero, and then use this linear approximation to estimate one over 3.2. Okay, so pause the video, take a minute, do this problem by yourself, um, and then come back. All right, you guys, so hopefully you pause the video um, and you work this out. So I'm going to go through this problem with you. So let's find F prime. Okay, so F prime of X. Well, let's write F of X first. Oops, sorry about that. Here, I'll just erase that. Let's just write F of X first. So F of X equals X plus three to the negative one power. So then F prime of X is equal to negative one times x plus three to the negative two power, right? Okay, so let me just double check. So, um, and then times the inner function's derivative, which is one, okay? So this is really f prime of x, oops. f prime of x equals negative one over x plus three quantity squared. Okay, and then they told us that a is equal to zero. Okay, so then we're going to find f prime of zero. Remember, we need to find the slope of the tangent line. So this is going to be negative one over three squared. So this will be negative one over nine. Okay. Okay, so we have negative one over nine. So this is our m right? This is the slope of the tangent line. This is our M, okay? So now we know that we need Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And by the way, your book might just straight up give you the formula. Um, certain books like to just write out the memorized formula. I just use the point slope form. But linearization, they'll, they'll all sometimes call it this, L of X um, is equal to F of A, uh, plus f prime of a times x minus a. But that's the same thing I'm doing 
with this. I just use the point slope form so I don't have to have another memorized formula, but they're the same thing. So I'll, I'll use the one your book might use. Um, so f of a, uh, or you know what, I'll, I'll use I'll use mine just so I don't do it two different ways. So, um, but if you see this in your book, uh, that's their formula. It's the same thing I'm doing. So we do y minus y1, but I need to know my y1. So I take a equals zero and I plug it in. So we get one third. So that would be my y coordinate equals, okay, equals um, m, which is negative one ninth times x minus zero. So let's clean this up. This will be negative one ninth x plus one third. So this is approximately one over x plus three. Now we know it's not right, or we don't think it's right, but what we're doing is we're saying that that will be an approximate representative of the function one over x plus three, which is a rational function, right? It has a, a horizontal or a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three, okay? So that's our linearization. This is our line. Let me do it in red. This is our line that represents one over x plus three. So they want us to use this to estimate one over 3.2. So one over 3.2 is the same as saying one over 0.2 plus three, right? And remember, this is our x value right here, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing with our line. We're gonna say our line negative one ninth, but x is going to be worth 0.2, Okay, um, plus one third. Okay, so let's take out our calculator. Uh, let's take out our calculator. So negative one ninth times two tenths plus one third. Let's do that. So negative one divided by, oops, let's do parentheses. Parentheses negative one divided by nine times two divided by 10. Um, and then what did we say? I believe it was plus one third, but let me just double check. Uh, plus one third. Plus parentheses one divided by three. Enter. So we get approximately 0. 0.31111. Okay. So this is approximately 0. 0.311, uh, or we could do one bar depending on how many um, we'll just round it to three. So what we're saying is, is that one over 3.2 is approximately equal to 0.311. Okay, so let's see. Let's go on our calculator and let's see. Let's do one divided by 3.2. And we get 0.3125. So we're not actually quite right, but we knew we wouldn't be. So we know the true answer or the true answer uh, of 1 over 3.2 is equal to 0.3125, I believe. That's what we got, right? 0.3125, okay? So what you could do is you can do something called absolute error, where you can take and you can find, so absolute you can find how far your approximation is, where you take the uh, approximate approximation or our linearization and subtract the exact, which is from the calculator, okay? So in our case, we can do the absolute value of 0.311. Uh, let's do another one because they have 0.3125. Let's throw another one. And we're gonna subtract 0.3125. Okay, so let's do that. Um, minus 0.3111. And we get 0 0.014. I know it should be negative, but the opposite values would turn it positive. So 0 0.0144. Oops, 0 0.0014. Sorry about that. So what this means is, is that our approximation is wrong for one over 3.2, but we're basically off by tens, hundreds, thousands. We're off by 14 um, or uh, just a little over um, one thousandth 
of um, a value, okay, or 0.14%. So we're really darn close to the correct answer, okay? So this is called absolute error. Um, sometimes they might ask you for that depending on the book you use. Um, next semester in Calculus 2, you might learn something else, uh, approximate using Taylor polynomials or the Taylor remainder. Um, but in general, uh, this is a, a problem you should be able to do. You first build your line, our linear approximation. You need to find the slope first of the tangent line. Then you build the line using this formula or using point slope form. Either way works. Um, and then once you have your line, you set it equal or approximately equal to the function, like I did here. And then once it's approximately equal to the function, you can start answering their questions. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys. Um, this is linearization. Thanks for watching.